Okay, thank you very much. Um, I guess, in some ways, this paper comes with a little bit of a health warning. Uh, the first time I gave, tried to give this, there was a hurricane. <laughs> Second time, um, I, I had to rearrange because I had to attend to a funeral. So the third time, I'm looking around, just making sure there's no, I'm not going to get struck by lightning or something terrible is not going to happen. Um, what's the focus of the paper? Well, um, in many ways, defects in elections, um, research on defects in elections, the majority of research tends to focus on how uh, the office-seeking behaviour of elites uh, leads to some kind of problems, as it were. And in many ways, that is how it how it should be. Um, you know, elections are games, and we should you know we should expect um, you know, the games of very high um, stakes, and we should expect elite actors to try to um, uh, kind of win in, in, in many ways. But as Pippa Norris identified earlier on. In, um, in, the, in, in the first talk, there can be other types of problems that, that might occur. Problems, uh, for example, of incompetence of, of, through officials, poor management, um, or errors as, as well. And for those reasons, um, the study of public management and the study of public administration has a lot to say uh, about um, electoral integrity, and there's a lot that can um, be learned. And there's lots of examples here, um, either in the UK, um, Canada, where apparently, you know, one report recently suggested that there are 500 serious administrative errors in, on average in each riding um, in the 2011 election. Um, in Malaysia, where there was perhaps more tra traditional types of fraud, but also some questions about in, in the, you know, the, how the indelible ink was uh, administered to voters. Uh, all these types of, of problems are a significant uh, area of study um, in itself. And so what this paper tries to do is two things. Firstly, uh, is try to talk a little bit about the kind of concepts we might try to use to, to think about um, these, these problems. Um, and second of all, um, identify perhaps in some ways the types of causes um, that um, might be making electoral administration difficult um, to, um, to manage um, within the UK focus. And it draw, does so by drawing from um, qualitative interviews. So to talk, um, so talk about... Um, kind of concepts first. Um, one concept that's been quite widely used is this idea of uh, electoral administration, maladministration that, that Pippa Norris um, uses in, in the forthcoming uh, introduction to the edited volume in electoral studies. Um, and in some ways, I guess what I try to do is try to kind of disaggregate this idea of electoral administration and to look at some of the different types um, and, and, and causes um, of it. So. Firstly, um, the paper introduces the idea of um, electoral, um, of organisational performance. And organisational performance, of course, is something which is quite widely used um, within public sector management, governments increasingly, ever since the new, uh, new, new public management uh, reforms from the 1980s onwards, always wanted to kind of evaluate the quality of, of, of services. And so there's a strong literature there um, about how public uh, organisations can, can measure um, performance within them. In particular, someone called Boyne at Cardiff University developed a kind of comprehensive framework for how um, public organisations can, can be measured and how we should think about their, their success. Um, and he points to, first of all, the outputs they produce in terms of the quantity, the quality, the cost effectiveness of, of, uh, of these. Um, secondly, in terms of the service outcomes, um, in terms of whether these um, outputs produce the desired goals that we want, whether they're formally effective, the, the broader impact that they have. Thirdly, responsiveness. Uh, and, fourth, uh, and fourthly, uh, kind of democratic norms, um, such as you know, the probity and accountability of those services. And so the paper, I won't go into, into this in too much detail here, you know, opens up some of, some of the ideas here, um, how this can kind of work through to elections. And I should say, I mean, this is not, uh, you know, trying to develop a new index in some ways. It's more of a kind of heuristic framework <laughs> for identifying, you know, type, types, of, types of problems. And following on from this, um, it's perhaps useful to think about, um, in terms of the types of problems, first of all, uh, failures of steering within electoral management boards, uh, where... Um, strategies or practices have been adopted with electoral management boards uh, that have developed kind of suboptimal organisational performance. Um, and I should say, perhaps in some ways, um, what works in one context might not work in another. And so it's you know it's a task of researchers really to in some ways to identify uh, an analyst to, uh, to identify what might constitute uh, a failure uh, of steering. Um, and secondly, failures of rowing. Uh, where essentially, you know, perhaps perfectly good practices have been developed 
and there's been an attempt to implement them. But in some ways, that hasn't quite happened uh, because individuals or teams of individuals on the ground haven't kind of followed those procedures or have, have adopted them in, in, in a problematic uh, kind, of, kind, of, kind of way. And the paper provides some, some kind of examples of the types um, um, of, of, of both um, of these. Um, in terms of concepts, a further area worth, worth identifying there is, is the um, uh, administrative environment in which electoral management kind of takes place. Um, the, the literature uh, on private sector management, but also public sector management, explains that um, um, performance might be partially, or perhaps in some cases entirely, uh, dependent on, on the context in which actors find themselves. So companies can go bust or out of business because of changes in consumer demand, in, in external changes. Um, in the public sector, um, problems might occur with um, hospitals or schools because of a, a broader range um, of, 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 of external changes. So identifying the nature of this environment is, is quite important. The empirical aspect of the, of the paper then looks uh, at Britain um, and tries to kind of, you know, explain how, you know, to what extent this is a problem in Britain, uh, and some of the reasons uh, for this. Um, and certainly there is um, evidence of poor performance, uh, organisational performance in Britain, um, in terms of uh, the, there's clear evidence of variation in terms of the outputs um, or, or, and the quality and the quantity of these outputs um, that different electoral uh, administrators have been, have been producing. Uh, very stark declining levels of registration, and this is a very recent phenomenon. You know, within the last 10 years or so, um, electoral registration uh, as, as a proportion of the population has dropped by a good 10 percentage points, uh, and this hasn't really been uh, e explained. Likewise, this is declining levels of, citi of citizen satisfaction uh, as well. So some of the responsiveness factors are quite, uh, quite important there. In terms of failures of steering, there's been some clear examples. The 2010 general election, the photo I had right at the start, there's queues outside uh, of polling stations. Um, the Scottish Parliament uh, elections, lots of uh, votes being rejected um, and, and so on. And also failures um, of rowing, um, errors on the ground. So there's been examples of miscounts where the wrong candidate's been elected. Uh, a BMP candidate was famously elected rather than the Labour candidate in, 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 a, in an election. Um, and because of the obscurities of British electoral law, it takes a lot to actually reverse um, that, that, that outcome. So this is a problem, um, I guess, as a Brit, we have to admit here uh, in Britain um, as well. So in terms of the empirical aspect of the paper, it, what was involved uh, was interviewing uh, officials um, on the ground who were uh, involved in um, implementing elections uh, themselves. Um, there's a very significant literature um, within public administration that focuses um, on you know, problems that can occur um, from top-down perspectives. And uh, scholars such as Catherine DeRose uh, focus on how you know, if, we, if we listen more to uh, administrators on the ground, we can use their experiences, uh, the kind of degree of expertise, the mundane expertise in some ways that they have to develop um, um, a greater understanding of the problems uh, that, 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 that we face. And this was, this was accompanied uh, with some elite interviews um, as well, but I'll skip over those uh, very, very briefly just because of concerns um, of time. So the interviews, as I say, there was uh, some 70 interviews um, that took place with electoral administrators across, across the UK, uh, who are local government uh, officials. Um, and the key question really was what were the challenges uh, that they identified um, you know, that, that prevented them um, you know, conducting elections to, to a high standard? What were the kind of things that they had to kind of confront on an everyday uh, basis? And there's 10 themes uh, which I'll skip over uh, relatively, relatively briefly here because they're all um, in the paper, which identify some you know, the, of the broader kind of clusters um, of, of factors that they're, that they're facing. Firstly, um, issues to do with decreased apathy um, amongst, amongst the voters themselves. What this meant in, in, in practice was that they had to kind of run faster, invest more resources just to stand still. Citizens perhaps were more distrustful um, of, of the services that they, they provided. Secondly, um, a changing um, urban Britain. Um, officials would talk about difficulties uh, of, of um, reaching out to voters. Traditionally, in, in, in Britain, uh, the electoral registration process has been conducted by a door-to-door -door, uh, annual canvas, and this has been the mainstay of how, how elections have, take, have taken place. 
but they, they report that this is much less effective in, in recent times because um, A, uh, people have suspicions about uh, answering the door uh, to, to, um, to uh, um, unsolicited, unsolicited uh, callers, uh, and B, um, there are some areas which they describe, particularly in inner city areas, as being off limits because of concerns of health and safety. Some of these are quite things such as um, you know, either dog bites or perhaps big blocks or, or estates that they, they're fearful of sending um, um, canvases into because of health, health and safety concerns. So they, you know, they, in some ways they try not to uh, tackle those areas. Thirdly, legal complexity and diversity. In the last 15 years in Britain, there's been an enormous increase in, in, in the range of elections, uh, the number of elections, the different types of elections, each of which have perhaps different electoral systems or even different uh, regulations uh, attached to those, which, meant, which means that electoral administrators have found difficulty in grasping um, what's, what's, uh, um, all, all the nuances of, of law. New technology, which provides in some ways opportunities for them to be bring about more cost-effective um, services. To, um, but on the other hand, um, has costs um, in terms of um, it's caused the, the citizens to react in, in, in different ways. Um, one problem that they face is that they, they, they note how citizens think that they're registered because they pay their taxes. Um, and they think that therefore system, government systems are coordinated. But actually, the electoral registration process is very it's very different. Uh, it's very discreet, uh, and so citizens can commonly turn up to elections without um, actually um, fi finding themselves on the on the electoral register. Um, some of the other factors: population movements, um, particularly in in um, in inner city areas where Britain's seen an increase in immigration, um, public sector resource constraints, uh, increases in networks, um, the, the range of actors involved in, in, in running elections they report as, as having increased. Partisanship, um, changing uh, public expectations, but also the rise of, so, of social media in terms of re reporting uh, problems. One um, administrator claimed that going back 15 or 20 years, there was a far worse, far worse things that happened at uh, elections, but they never ever got into the public eye because the public gaze wasn't on that aspect of elections. Whereas nowadays, things can be tweeted. Uh, retweeted and, 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 and reached the media um, much, much, much quicker. So the claim here is that there's quite significant external change that, that's happened for election administration um, in Britain. Changes partly a result of, the, of changes in the British state, partly technolo technological, partly demographic, demographic partly um, socioeconomic as well. But at, while this external change has happened, procedures have stayed relatively still in Britain. So taking a longer term perspective, you know, this has been a period of rapid change, but no, uh, no, 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 no reform. So by way of summary, I guess the idea here is that, you know, talk, thinking about organizational performance, and using concepts of steering and rowing can be helpful. Those concern, for, uh, cause for concern in Britain, um, and there are new challenges arising, which perhaps in many ways might make high um, performance quite difficult um, to achieve. And as ever, thank you very much to the sponsors, but also to Pippa to the team and, and the team for organizing such a, such a great conference.